Welcome back to the Chairside Case of the Week. My name is Dr. Abai, and I want to share a very special case with you. This patient came to our clinical operatory here at Glidewell with an existing fixed dental prosthesis spanning from teeth number 7 to 10, and she requested that this bridge be replaced, uh, first of all for aesthetic reasons, but also because there were some open margins uh, around this uh, restoration. So going through with uh, treatment planning and at the next visit, uh, along with treatment planning for the aesthetics of the anterior teeth, I also treatment plan to place the implants in the proper position so that the patient can receive these implants and eventually we can have screw retained crowns uh, placed for this patient. Another request from the patient was that she wanted to have individual teeth so that she can floss between them uh, like she did when she had her original teeth. So we had gone through a treatment planning for that and uh, I wanted to make sure that I can place these implants mesiodistally, buccolingually, and correct angulation and make sure that the screw channel is coming through the lingual and I can have some very nice screw retained crowns uh, for the end product. So going through with the uh, guided surgery, I went ahead and removed the soft tissue and initially I utilized osteotomy drills until I got to the point where uh, the last osteotomy drill matches the size of the implant. And as you can see here, I can go ahead and place the implant through the sleeve of the surgical guide. And this is a tooth supported surgical guide. And the patient can receive those implants uh, in the precise location uh, that we had planned it for. Another advantage of utilizing some of these digital treatment planning softwares is that we can actually do a digital wax up based on where the proposed implant position is. And I can ask the laboratory to fabricate uh, screw retained biotemps for me. And in this case, uh, they are splinted together just to give us a little more stability between those implants. And I can go ahead and deliver the biotemps. This is a factor of being able to precisely place the implants where you had proposed it. If the implants aren't precisely placed in those positions, uh, then you're going to have some issues with uh, getting a temporary like this to sit uh, on top of the implants. So I'll go ahead and place Teflon and composite in the lingual screw channels of the uh, implant restorations. And once that is set, then what I'll do with the original biotem that I had fabricated for the patient, I'll go ahead and remove each lateral individually and adjust the contact point and make sure that I can seat them. And I'll go ahead and temporarily cement them, uh, taking care that I can remove all the excess cement. Uh, obviously, I want to make sure that I don't have any excess cement, especially in the uh, areas where the implants have been placed. An additional step to make sure that this temporary is secure um, is uh, bonding these temporaries uh, together. So I'll use a little bit of bonding material and flowable composite, and in approximately, I'll bond the laterals to the centrals, and that'll give me a little bit more of a peace of mind that the patient's not going to dislodge these temporaries while the healing period uh, begins and ends. Usually for a site like this in the maxillary anterior, uh, I want those implants in place for about three to four months before I go back and remove the temporary and start with the uh, final impression phase. So I'll check the occlusion with some shim stock and make sure that the patient is not occluding on these restorations for both the centrals and laterals. And now we have a good view of the patient in the four unit temporary. Now, as the patient returns, uh, after a few months, I can go ahead and remove these temporaries and take a look at the soft tissue and evaluate and make sure that my soft tissue is where I want it to be. If I don't have proper contours, uh, this is the stage where I can utilize my temporary and create the contours that I need for uh, my final restorations. And uh, obviously the, the gingival contour is going to be really important uh, for the final aesthetic result. So once we have the temporaries in the proper position and I know that I have proper contours, I'll go ahead and take a final impression. So this was about uh, four months after the implants were replaced. I'll bring the patient back and I have already created a certain level of gingival architecture. There are different techniques on keeping uh, the architecture while you take a final impression. I didn't think that was necessary in this situation because the patient has a very thick gingival biotype and I can actually go directly to uh, the fabrication of the final restorations. 
Now, one of the restorations that I've found where if a patient uh, and a clinician would prefer a porcelain fused to metal type of restoration, uh, the obsidian to metal has been extremely aesthetic, and I've found it to be very acceptable in terms of uh, the final results. And uh, in this case, that's exactly what I prescribe for my patient is uh, obsidian to metal restorations uh, for both the uh, implant restorations and the, the lateral, which were uh, on natural teeth. So after a, a, a try-in stage, I'll go ahead and deliver the centrals uh, where the uh, screw retain implants. And again, I'll place Teflon and composite. And once those are delivered, I'll go ahead and deliver the both laterals. And um, the best part about utilizing a, a PFM type of restoration is I can go ahead and cement these restorations as I would traditionally cement um, any PFM restoration. So I'll take the patient through uh, the cement cleanup, make sure that I didn't leave any cement behind, and we check the occlusion and we make sure again that on the uh, implant, especially on the implant restorations, the shim stock is passing through. I can see here that the shim stock is catching on the centrals, so I want to make sure I check with articulating paper. And if there are any contacts, I'll go ahead and make my adjustments. And again, I'll polish the porcelain, and then we have a finished product. So I'll take the patient through the entire protocol of making sure that not only do these fit and look nice, but also functionally, and in terms of the occlusion, uh, the patient is comfortable, and, and I can be comfortable uh, with the occlusion. So here you see the final result of the uh, obsidian to metal restorations. They are beautiful and they blend uh, very well together along with the, uh, with the soft tissue and the gingiva. And we were able to really create some nice uh, aesthetics for this patient with the peaks of soft tissue and also with the uh, overlying porcelain uh, on top of these restorations with the obsidian to metal crowns. Well, I hope you enjoyed this case of the week and I hope to see you back here for uh, yet another case of the week here at Glidewell Dental Laboratory.